Okay, so just generally about 12 steps and um, some, some, some of the lingo in 12-step fellowships around uh, love addiction, uh, sex addiction, and, uh, and anorexia, which are some common, common terms used in. I mean, for me, the, uh, the love addiction, codependency, attachment uh, to others, uh, and 12 steps, for me, it's just, it's really good to work a 12-step program if you suffer with uh, love addiction, getting very, very dependent, or going, potentially going into a lot of fantasy around a potential partner, or someone that, that you become obsessed with, so that can be something like love addiction or codependency. Uh, some people suffer a lot with extreme obsession, uh, and can actually get suicidal because they project that the loss of the person means that there's no point in living. So it's like the person becomes uh, 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 imbued with, with the qualities of God, basically. So it's like if they lose, you know, this person is like my God. If this person dumps me or dies, then there's no point to live. So I will just try and commit. So that can, that's extreme love addiction, extreme dependency. Uh, so, um, uh, they, you know, also there can be sex addiction, where uh, people are either uh, addicted to, um, uh, can be sex, or can be addicted to pornography, uh, <clears throat> so there can be sex addiction. So those things, is, is good to go to certain 12-step fellowships, which will deal with those few that deal with relationships in the 12-step field. Um, and. Uh, with uh, something like, uh, uh, it, with love addiction, they'll often say like you can get a, something like a qualifier. Uh, like if you go into a 12-step program, the lingo is like, oh, I'm in agony because uh, the person I was dating has suddenly gone off with somebody else, and I'm in extreme pain, and you can go to a 12-step fellowship. Often, um, uh, People will display symptoms like they'll want to like look them up on Facebook or stand outside their house or or maybe even beg them to come back, you know, uh, the various things because they feel like there there's no point to living or life would be is very distressing. It's almost they act in a similar way to drug addicts or, or alcoholics. It's like you know this is the source of without this there's not much point in living. They need to have this we call a fix. Uh, regularly. They need to have contact with them regularly, just like an alcoholic needs to have a drink every day. Well, this person needs to have some kind of, see a message, you know, that you can be, you know, they feel bad because they're not getting regular texts from the people. They're getting bad because they're not hearing the voice of the person, or they can't see the person, or be with the person. So they go through kind of an agony, and then usually, in the you know, the funny thing with, like, love addiction, because it's treated in, in a very, very similar way to like uh, alcohol addiction. You know, like with alcohol addiction, if you want to go through what's called the withdrawal, uh, if you want to go through, if you want to reclaim your sense of self or your connection to God, you have to like totally cut that off and, and or bottom line or stay away from that thing. You can't keep going back to try and get another hit so that, so that you get your sense of self back. You know, so you have to like, so they'll say like, you know, like if I speak to someone and they say, oh, well, I, have, I feel like I want to text them 10 times a day. I want to look them up on Facebook and see what they're doing 10 times a day on Facebook. Uh, I think I'll probably just drive around their street in front of their house 10 times a day. Uh, I'll, I'll probably, if someone said that to me, I'd say like, okay, if you want to work, if you want to like get a connection to God and feel happy again, you've got to cut all of that out. You can't, that would be like you drinking again, you know, like giving up alcohol and taking a drink. So you do that, and then you go through what's uh, in 12 step they call withdrawal process for a period of time. Um, and it could be anything from weeks to months or even years. Uh, so it, should, it shouldn't be more than, you know, hopefully within a few months. Um, go through the withdrawal process. Don't do those things to try and get another hit out of, you know, like check a Facebook or make a text or call them. Or, or do, do things like that. And then suddenly, as you go through this, this reservoir of, um, uh, it's like, a, it's a re you guys call it a reservoir of attachment, you know, of just think, needing another person to be the thing that will fix you. I'd imagine it would be more than a few months, right, to let go of the it majority could, of your 
attachments. Yes, no, yeah, for, for the individual, you know, to get to, to get a, a feeling of relief from that individual being your source, and to, to let go of lifetimes of yes, of course, there's going to be more than that. But uh, I think most people would would be within uh, if it's a big one within a year or two, uh, they should be fine as long as they're not re going on and doing those things that addicted them to that person or doing something with a similar person within the within the withdrawal period. Um, so so that's the thing you do and then you get your sense of self and then you have to re-keep your sense of self, which is a spiritual practice. You could do in usually in twelve step groups, prayer and meditation, speaking with fellows, doing step work. You know, if you're doing stuff from here, you could be using the Course in Miracles lessons and the observer technique. If you're interested in, in um, uh, Doc, Dr. Hawkins has got a great book for people in 12 steps, which I recommend, which is called Healing and Recovery. Healing and Recovery uh, is, is a book which is just a transcription of his office series, which he did really early on, which is, um, uh, which is really geared to people in, that, in addiction, 12-step fellowships, who really connect with that forgiving. So I do recommend that book to people in 12 steps, even though his other books but for people who are just uh, going in addiction. So that's the thing. I mean, with sex addiction, if it's like pornography or if it's going to visit sex workers or if it's like getting a new, trying to get a new girlfriend every day or something like that, uh, sex addicts, then it would be to cut all of those behaviors out, go through the withdrawal process until you get uh, a sense of self and your connection to God or the observer or the sense of peace because uh, those, those things are coming from a low vibration, low level of consciousness. So that's what you do in the 12-step group. I mean, this is just my views. 12-step groups, uh, they may use the theme of like sexual anorexia, social anorexia. Um, uh, and so they may say things like, oh, you know, you're sexually anorexic or socially anorexic. You need to get into a relationship, you're sexually anorexic, or you may be socially anorexic, like why don't you go out dancing, go to parties, uh, start having a social life. Um, so that's the kind of things I do. I think those are very, very helpful, just like if you have a food anorexic who doesn't eat, it's important to eat. But you know, for me, the thing I like to focus on is dissolving the ego, as opposed to, uh, I mean, it's a good thing to work on the externals, to fix a problem, uh, but uh, for me, I th you know the ego, the ego, the sense of repressed feelings and thoughts and belief systems of the ego, is uh, is the is why one experiences separation in the present moment. So separation is just um, uh, it, all that is creating a sense of separation is. Uh, is the level is the is the belief systems which are currently identified within the ego and the level of repressed feelings. If you let if you feel out your feelings or let go of your repressed feelings and cancel or dissolve or go to the observer of all your thoughts, you're going to feel the oneness. You go into a non-dual state. So for me, that is the ultimate cure for what all humans suffer with. All humans one second, if I can just carry it from for me, all, suffer, all humans are suffering from separation, anxiety, feeling a sense of separation in the now. And it's one thing to do, like, I feel a, separ a sense of separation in the now, and if I had a girlfriend, that would fix the sense of separation in the now. But for me, that's just a level of consciousness. It's still projecting that another person or an object is giving the sense of wholeness in the now. Uh, but as you go to the higher levels of consciousness, it's a state. Is a state, it's a non-dual state that goes consistently throughout the day, which is not a variable of a person being present or not. So it just dissolves something. So I like to, to look at it on, if I dissolve my ego, that's going to the deepest root of why I feel separation. I, why do I not feel limitless love and connection and oneness now? Is because of my ego identification in the now. And it's good to do all the other stuff, but that's the that's really what pleases you up to yeah, I just wanted to uh, comment. Uh, Doc talks about if I, like you were saying, for an anorexic to like go out and get a relationship, that would be working on the level of the two hundreds of the body, yeah. or potentially even lower. And then I agree with what you're saying. Like working on the thoughts and the feelings and perceptions is like 
in the 500s and 600s and then eventually getting to that non-dual state where you're one and whole instead of projecting it onto like a girlfriend or something. So. Yeah, I, I agree because actually, you know, the, the separation is created by the ego. So it is a, it is a limited idea to project that um, if I project like, uh, if I project specialness onto a woman, uh, then, uh, uh, then basically it's, it's a limiting idea that when this woman is with me, then I feel connected, I feel love, and I feel good. But then it creates limiting idea in consciousness that if this woman was to leave me, then I would now no longer be in a state of love and connection. But a love and connection is actually uh, experienced through lack of ego, not through an external person, place or situation or a feeling of thought. So as I dissolve my ego, I dissolve the sense of separation, i.e. the, yeah. So does that mean you have to be at like level 500 to not have any, because like pretty much all people around the world have problems and suffering to, to do with relationships and it kind of sounds like um, for me to let go, to basically <laughs> get to at least level 500 before you're able to have a healthy relationship where you're not dependent. No, I don't. I think I think uh, you can have. I mean, you can have you can have relationships at all levels of consciousness. It's just the perception and the experience of the relationship is very different at different levels. So, at a certain level. Like if I was an act of addiction, it would be like if I lost the person, it would be like, well, what's the point of living? Or uh, at another level, as you get into high levels of consciousness, then I'd say like normal people will have a, a level of grief, but it will be for a limited time and they'll be able to get on with it. I mean, if you're, in the, uh, if you're at the levels of uh, committed to unconditional love or saintliness, then um, I, I love the prayer of St. Francis. You know, and St. Francis for me is the opposite of the, uh, uh, of, of the ego, of the, sorry, the addict. The, you know, because St. Francis says it's to be of love, not to seek love. And uh, all teachers of enlightenment say they seek or want nothing. They need or want nothing. Every teacher of enlightenment, you go, all of them have said the same thing. And for me, it's the gold standard at enlightenment. Is There's nothing they need. If you, if you could go up to any enlightened teacher and you say, is there anything you need or want that I can give to you? They will all say there isn't anything. And there's nothing I need or want from anything or anybody right now. They all say the same thing. So St. Francis says, um, it's not to seek love, but to be of love. It's to be committed to being of love and service. Don't seek. Because you're, you're, you're reaffirming the ego's uh, need to get something. So that, that's the commitment. And as soon as you get to the levels of enlightenment, of course, you're not experiencing yourself as a separate self. So only a separate, an experience, if I experience myself as being a separate self in this moment, then my separation will seek something of, as a ob projected object to come, to come towards it, to have a sense of oneness or completion. That's the projection when you're feeling separation. But, uh, but you know, normal people aren't, aren't saints. They have relationships, um, and and that's fine. You know, uh, for me, it's more like it's the animal. Animal has there's nothing wrong, you know. Uh, and uh, and uh, but the five hundreds, this fi the feelings of grief and separation or missing will happen less. You know, and when you're committed to enlightenment, it's like to be in the to be in the presence in every moment. You know, I mean, there's one thing I really loved with uh, Hawkins, uh, something that I heard. So it's like he's having a sandwich, you know, in every moment you're in that moment, you're in that precise moment, which is every moment is complete. There's nothing that needs to be added to the precise moment you're in, because there's no ego story or dialogue. So you're eating a sandwich, uh, uh, when they're in a non-dual state, so they don't experience themselves as, body, as, as the body. Eating a sandwich, and the phone rings, and then you pick up, the, the, the phone gets picked up, and the sandwich is completely forgotten. You even forget to go back to the sandwich. You see, because each moment is absolutely fulfilled and complete and total. To, and even the memory of the sandwich is gone. Now, for a normal person, you know, it's like 
you wouldn't be in the splits, you know, the next moment, you wouldn't be in the next moment. You know, like normal people would probably be thinking, I need to finish that sandwich. Because I was having, I've just left half of the sandwich and my stomach's rumbling. And I should go back and finish that sandwich. So you'll be like 99% on the call, but then 2% of your ego is going, no, I want to go back to the sandwich, you see. Or in my case, it'd be the don donut, do you see? You see but, that one, yeah. <laughs> but it wouldn't be the sandwich. So, but when, when you've lost your ego, like every moment is complete and there's nothing you want, you know, like you're saying, you know, like if someone was, uh, you know, if, if, if Hawkins was probably eating a donut and someone said, well, I can, would you like me to bring you another bag of donuts tomorrow? You know, it wouldn't be, you wouldn't need another bag of donuts tomorrow. It's not the donuts that create the, the you know, the, the now. So, they're just different levels. There's nothing wrong, with, you know, as a, I, for me, there's no good or bad. It's just, the, but each level, as you let go of more of the ego, your perception, your experience of the world is totally different. And uh, for me, it's more of a commitment. You know, I seek enlightenment, so it's like not to project onto objects any special meaning. You know, I don't want, because as soon as I project a specialness onto, you know, like my mother recently died, that's a big attachment from birth. Uh, my father is elderly. But I don't want to like pick up big new attachments. That's not my thing for the rest of my life. You know, I've had my, you know, I've got just my father left. I'll have, I'll have to like process him when he's gone. But I don't want to meet like a, a new girl, for example, and then project your everything in my life, and uh, you know, you're the you're my whole thing for living. I don't want to do that really, because it just means that I'll have to go through releasing that attachment later on. So. Oh yes, talking about it. So love addiction, sex addiction. So this thing, which I, which I, you know, for me in twelve steps, they talk about staying in fit spiritual condition. You mustn't lose your spiritual connection, otherwise you go back into the insanity of think, thinking those things. You need those things. So for me, it's like doing the observer, doing the observer, and the letting go, feel the feelings. It's like use, just by experiencing all feelings as they arise and doing the observer or cancelling the beliefs um, is not to let, you, you monitor your own thoughts is an attachment building up. You know, if you start to meet a new person in your life, are you doing the observer regularly? Are you letting go and allowing your feelings to be released on a regular basis so that you can, you know, the aim should be like, uh, I haven't got a girlfriend, but if I met a girl, as soon as the date's over, it should be like, to, you know, my aim would be like to completely forget, almost like she never existed. To be like, if I was in the park, I want to be 100% in the park and have no memory, just to be committed to the present moment, you know, to the observer, release the story, release any energy and just be just now, in every moment. Not to allow the ego to, to build up attachments, you know, and that's what would be for me. That's not part of the 12 steps, but that's what I would aim to do. And it, you have more... The less of your ego is in it every moment. It's not. Thing is, like the ego wants personal love, and spiritual love is non-personal. It's, it's impersonal love, because there's equal love in every moment. You know, the chair, like the Course of Miracles, the chair is just as lovable as 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 the person sitting opposite me, which is just as lovable as the plant. You see, but to the to the ego. It's like, no, humans have a higher order of lovability than plants, uh, which, have a, which, ha which, ha which have a different level of, uh, of lovability for mobile phones, you see, each has a different level. But that's only the ego stuff. Actually, in presence, everything is equal. I mean, there's no, there's no ego there monitoring or, or saying this and that without anything. So, yeah, if you are suffering with anything like uh, love addiction or sex addiction or dependency issues, I recommend uh, going to a 12-step program and they're very, very helpful. Uh, battery symbols flashing.